Hello and welcome. My name is Brian Kaplan, editor of The Banker. I'm here with Dimitrio Solorio, who is Global Head of Debt Capital Markets for Societe Generale's Corporate and Investment Bank. And we're reviewing the outlook for the debt capital markets in 2017. Now, Dimitrio, in 2016, we saw very low interest rates and a lot of volatility in the markets. Do you expect 2017 to have the same trends or is it going to be different? Well, uh, Brian, I think 2017 is, is indeed going to be different. I think there are uh, some, some things changing profoundly in the capital markets. I mean, the first one is the direction of interest rates. Now we know that uh, the uh, monetary policy uh, is tightening and at both sides of the Atlantic. In the US, it is predicted that the Fed will, will raise rates uh, two or three times in 2017. And the long-term interest rates have already reacted to that. We have as well the new Trump administration, which is likely to, to boost the fiscal investment. And that as well has driven rates uh, higher up. All right, so if we have higher rates, I mean, what is that going to do for issuance? Well, I mean, higher rates uh, will indeed uh, depress some, is some issuance from, from corporates. Uh, it's true that corporates, for instance, around the world have been profiting from very low interest rates over the last few years. And they have taken this chance uh, to uh, uh, reconfigure the, their liabilities and to, and to issue more in anticipation of uh, further needs. We may, may expect that with the, the higher interest rates, uh, this trend will, will abate a little bit. But I want to insist just a little bit, interest rates will continue to be extremely low. And as economic growth is, is now better, CAPEX is as well increasing. We expect that the corporate supply will remain quite, uh, quite, uh, quite solid in 2017. OK, uh, but the other thing that's happened is oil prices have gone up um, and we're seeing an increase in, in M&A activity in the corporate market. Um, do you think those two things will have an effect on corporate issuance? Well, I think so. I mean, um, I don't see the, uh, the direct connection between oil pricing and M&A, maybe in some sectors like M&A, like, like the oil sector itself. In general terms, we do predict a pickup in M&A, but that is more because financing remains very, very low, even if rates are uh, a little bit higher. But second, the economic prospects are better both in Europe and in the US, uh, growth has come back. Uh, and uh, I think that certain sectors have much more visibility in terms of future uh, turnover and financials. So yes, we are predicting that there's going to be a pickup in M&A. And of course, this will have a repercussion in corporate supply. Uh, we expect that maybe 20, 25% of all corporate supply in 2017 will be M&A driven. OK. And what about the volatility that we saw last year? Is that going to continue? We're still in very choppy times from a political point of view. That's indeed the big question mark of 2017. I mean, the political agenda is very heavy. There are plenty of elections, as we know. There are processes like the Brexit process that, that is bringing uncertainty as well. So indeed, we expect that the year will be volatile. Um, now, uh, you know, to mitigate all that, uh, investors are extremely cash rich. And investors around the world, in Europe and in the US, have already developed uh, uh, a certain, um, I would say, um, immunity, uh, yeah. immunity, or they they are far far more uh, solid in terms of their views uh, after many years of volatility of the financial crisis. So volatility will be there for sure, but I do believe that the ample liquidity in investor hands uh, will will be a, a very strong mitigant uh, versus that. Yes, All right, sir? and just to finish off, what about the the banks and the financials? Um, I mean, they're still working through a whole bunch of regulations, aren't they? And we're seeing new kinds of issuance. I mean, how much do you think that will be a feature of 2017? It's going to be very important. I mean, especially um, uh, on, in the last weeks of 2016, uh, we got far more clarity on certain matters. For instance, we know that uh, uh, Basel IV and the impact of Basel IV on credit, uh, now we are more uh, uh, aware about what is going to be the impact on banks. Uh, banks will need to raise more capital uh, to be able to uh, fulfill all this. But, um, less than we thought, and it's going to be postponed over time. This is one factor. Second very important factor is the clarification of TILAC and REL, uh, so the amount of bonds that banks need to issue to be able to absorb losses before the taxpayer can eventually decide to put money into a failing institution. So now we know that um, uh, there's going to be a new class of products that has started in France, uh, the senior bilineable or right. the senior non preferred And uh, how fast do you think that's going to grow then, the so-called tier three bonds? It's going to grow quite fast. Uh, it has already been growing uh, through the um, uh, senior hall coissuance, which is the same concept uh, in certain countries, uh, for instance in the UK, but as well in some others like Belgium. Now France has embraced uh, a route, the senior non preferred route, we are predicting that uh, countries uh, will uh, very quickly transpose into their lo uh, the local laws uh, the provisions from the, co the European Commission that will be published very soon. So we are predicting a big increase in these sort of assets, like 40, 50 percent this year. Okay, Dimitro, thanks for telling us all about 2017. Thank you very much. Thank you, Brian.